I got an Oculus Quest 2 about six months ago, and it's been great. Excellent value for money, and I've had a lot of fun with it. One of the things I told myself to convince me to buy it was that I would totally have a play around with it in Unity if I did, and it never happened. Well, it was time to change that. I decided to try and make a Kamehameha in VR. I created a Unity project and imported Valve's Steam VR Unity package. You get a ton of stuff for free in this package. It comes with everything you need to bring your head and hands into VR. It even has models for your hands that react to your hand positions, so with all that stuff already good to go, all I really had to do was get straight to work on creating my Kamehameha. So I added a new script to the right hand of the VR game object, called it Kamehameha, and got to work. The first thing I wanted to do was detect when my hands were close enough together for my Kamehameha to start, and have some kind of visual indication that it was working. It sounded like the perfect situation for some debug rays, but after many attempts I still couldn't get them working properly and ended up with some wacky results. My next best option was to go for a line renderer, so I adjusted my code a little bit, and hmm, that's not quite right. But the fix was easy, I just needed to reduce the width and I had a nice little line going from my left hand to my right hand. Progress. Now all I had to do was change the colour of the line renderer based on how far apart my hands were. Easy. Except it wasn't easy. The colour option on a line renderer doesn't seem to do anything. After doing some googling, it became apparent that the common thing to do is to change the colour of the line renderer's material rather than the colour option on the line renderer itself. In fact, the reason why my line was pink in the first place was because it didn't even have a material. So I created a material, put it on my line renderer, and look at that, a nice grey line. Now if I update the colour based on the distance between my hands, I should get a good indicator that my distance detection is working. It works! I had spent far too much time on trying to get lines to appear and colours to change at this point, so to celebrate, I played with my new colour changing line toy for longer than any sane person would. My next step was to make a sphere appear between my hands. I wanted the sphere to look cool and translucent with a blue glow and a white centre, just like in the anime. I tried to achieve that sort of look using Unity's shader graph with the Universal Render Pipeline. Unfortunately, updating the project to use the Universal Render Pipeline broke everything. All my textures were now pink, so I spent the next 20 minutes trying to fix them. After figuring out why all my textures were borked, I could dive into the shader graph to create my Kamehameha chargey sphere thingy. I spent a long time trying to figure out the best way to do this. I had recently seen some videos about using camera depth to get these sorts of effects and I was sure I could get what I wanted using a similar approach. Oh how wrong I was. After two hours of tweaking, adjusting and rearranging, I realised that the only node I really needed for this kind of effect was the Fresnel node. How silly of me. But I didn't mourn the loss of my two hours for long because I was now one step closer to my goal. I put my newly created sphere into a prefab so I could instantiate it from my script. Then I added a couple of simple lines of code to my script. Instantiate the sphere if my hands were close enough together, and destroy the sphere if my hands got too far apart. After making those changes and testing it out, I got this. Promising, but that's a little bit too big. I wanted the sphere's size to be based on how far apart my hands were, so I made a quick adjustment to my script, scaled down the sphere prefab, and tested it out. Damn, that's cool. That's cooler than it has any right to be. It's just a fuzzy circle appearing between my hands, and yet it feels so cool. I tweaked my script a little more to make the size change more smoothly, and then I spent the next few minutes practicing my Goku impression by yelling Kamehameha, alone in my bedroom, with a screen strapped to my face. Still, it's not the saddest thing you could be doing alone in your bedroom with a screen strapped to your face. The sphere was done, but it didn't quite feel right. I knew why. The sound. There was no charging sound. That epic sound you hear in the anime just as the sphere forms and everything starts to glow blue. If my Kamehameha was going to feel right, then it needed the right sound. It was time for Google. That was easy. This sound is perfect, and is free, and that's my favourite price. I needed to cut and loop the sound though. The charging portion of the sound and the blast portion of the sound needed to be played separately, and I needed the charge portion to be able to loop so I could charge my Kamehameha indefinitely. I downloaded the sound and opened it in Audacity. Cutting the sound into two parts was easy enough, but getting the charge to loop was a little bit tricky. It's basically a fade out and back into an earlier point in the sound effect. I'll admit that what I ended up with wasn't great, but it'll do. I tweaked my script to play the charge sound when the sphere appears and to switch to the loop at the perfect time so it wasn't too noticeable. With that, my sphere was feeling a lot cooler. 
I could feel the power of my key flowing into it. Now it was time to start on the blast. When Goku fires his Kamehameha, there's a big spray of energy coming out of his hands around the actual beam of the Kamehameha. I wanted to replicate this using a particle effect, specifically a particle effect created in Unity's VFX graph. So I imported the package from the package manager, created an effect and started shaping it to my needs. I wanted to get all the particles appearing from a singular point, but spraying out in a cone type shape, starting white and turning more blue as they flew away. It wasn't too hard to achieve this by adjusting some of the settings on the default system that Unity provides when you make a new shader graph. While I was playing with the shader graph though, I decided to see if I could make the sphere look even cooler. I had a look at the swarm preset which creates a cool looking sphere of red particles all flying away in similar directions. I changed the colour to blue and messed with the other settings until I had a fuzzy looking blue sphere. It looked better than I could have hoped. So good that I added it to my sphere prefab, hopped into VR and proceeded to shove my head into it. After that minor distraction of being mesmerised by fancy particle effects, it was time to think about how to get the actual blast to work. When Goku fires his Kamehameha, he throws his hands forward. I could do the same in VR and detect the speed of the throw as a trigger for the blast. I added a little bit of code to my script to detect the speed of my hand, then added a check to see if the speed of my hands went over some arbitrary amount while I was charging the Kamehameha. If my hands went over this speed, the blast would be triggered and instantiate my blasting particle effect. Pro tip. If you're instantiating a particle effect, make sure you aren't instantiating it every single frame. Your computer will thank you. After putting out the fire that burst from my PC, I went back to my script and fixed my little mistake. Hey, that actually looks kind of cool. It doesn't sound right and it doesn't turn properly, but it still looks pretty cool. That's more like it. Although, I still wasn't happy with it. The particles would move along with my hands, even particles that were now meters away. It looked odd. I needed a way to make the particles move freely on their own after they had been created. That turned out to be a little more tricky than I had hoped, but after a lot of reading and tweaking, I managed to get something I was happy with. Next, I was going to make the actual beam of the Kamehameha, but I distracted myself with another idea. In the anime, when charging up a Kamehameha, there's often small beams of light coming out of the sphere shooting in random directions. I decided to try and recreate them. The line renderer seemed like the right tool for the job, so I created one and put a new shader graph material on it so I could get it to fade out as it got further away from the sphere. This meant another long session of trial and error with the shader graph, but I eventually got something that I liked the look of. It would have been cool to make a random number of rays appear, but I didn't do that. I was too lazy. I hard-coded the number of rays to 3, and I didn't even bother to code it nicely. I just duplicated the code I had written for the first ray and numbered the variable names. This is just for fun after all, it doesn't need to be clean and perfect. Hmm, that's not quite right. Ah, that's better. It actually looks kinda... good. I adjusted the shader graph and added some variables so that I could make the rays fade in as the sphere charges up, and I ended up with this. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Okay, enough beating around the bush. It was time to make the actual beam of the Kamehameha, starting with just the tip. This will be the tip of the blast, which is typically bigger than the beam itself. It made sense to just use a bigger version of the sphere prefab, so at the same time the particle effect is instantiated, just the tip should also be instantiated and be told to move forwards. For the actual beam, I needed another line renderer. A nice chunky one that follows the tip along and connects it to my charging sphere. Then, all I needed to do was charge up my sphere and make sure the beam actually fires in the right direction. It was going the right way now, but it still didn't look quite how I'd envisioned. The line renderer isn't lining up well enough to look like an actual 3D beam. The width and colour just weren't selling it. Making the beam white instead of grey was a good start, but it still needed more. I set the width of the beam to change along with the size of the charging sphere, and I adjusted the speed of the Kamehameha to be a little bit slower so we can appreciate it more as it flies away. It was looking pretty good at this point, and it felt epic to play with, but we could still do better. What it really needed was some bloom to make it look all glowy and sexy. To do that, I added some appropriate emission settings to my Kamehameha's materials, added a post-processing volume to my scene, enabled post-processing on my camera, and forgot to enable HDR. So I spent a good while looking through settings, tweaking things, and wondering why it wasn't working until I stumbled upon the HDR setting. And with that set to use pipeline settings, suddenly my materials came alive and glowed bright and beautiful. I adjusted the materials a little bit so they didn't look too glowy, and ended up with this. And it looks great. 
I really felt like I was standing on a perfectly square levitating block, blasting Kamehameha's off into the distance. We've come so far. That was practically the whole effect done, but the way the Kamehameha was suddenly disappearing when I was done blasting just didn't sit right with me. I wanted to make it fade away like the energy was actually dissipating. I almost wish I didn't bother. It took far too long to get it looking okay, and the end result, while better than it suddenly disappearing, wasn't that great. But finally, our epic VR Kamehameha creation was complete. I had loads of fun playing with it and shouting Kamehameha at the top of my lungs, much to the dismay of my neighbours. They can consider it payback for when I hear them doing what I can only assume is some kind of very intense wrestling match. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this sort of thing, then please consider subscribing and leaving a like. In the next video, I'll be trying to make a destructor disc in VR, so keep an eye on my channel if that sounds cool to you. I am Bored Jordan, and you've just watched me struggle to make a Kamehameha in VR.